Hello? Hi. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Prasita, and uh, giving me an opportunity to interact with uh, a diverse form of uh, audience. And probably we are used to only face-to-face -face lectures, but uh, this hybrid mode was uh, initiated during the COVID time, so uh, quite used to it now. And uh, not really knowing the kind of audience that I have, but I still try to 
deliver whatever little I have an understanding on the policies and the procedures, uh, especially with reference to uh, differently abled, as you said, although I uh, uh, wish to call them as uh, people with disability rather than differently abled. So to start with, I can I take the charge of sharing and presenting my PPT? Sure. Is it visible? Is the PPT visible? Hello. Yeah. Is the PPT visible to you? No, 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 not now. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Is it visible now? Not yet, not yet. Not yet. I don't know why not it is yet. not sharing. Hello, no, please slide. Can you please send me the slide? I'm ah, sure I'll do that. Sure I'll do that. Okay. Can you please again tell me, Pasita? Put it in the chat box. I've shared it on your WhatsApp as well. Shall I share it in the chat box as well? Can you send it to me? I have put my email ID in the chat box. That will be better so that I can open it directly from the computer itself. Okay. Share Prasita. I've shared it. I hope it is visible. Is it visible? 
Yes, thank you. It is visible. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I think I do not have the control to change the slides. You just need to say me next. I will change. The okay. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. So, uh, as it has been uh, given as a topic for me to uh, share my views on government policies and procedures to ensure inclusive society with special reference to different EAP. Uh, here I would like to first talk about uh, what do we understand by the term inclusive society and who are differently able and what does social inclusion mean so that we can put the things into perspective. So for uh, inclusive society is one that seeks to uh, involve everyone actively, equitably and respectfully uh, in terms of considering all of them as a members of the society. So uh, since inclusion is a very powerful tool and it's a very powerful concept uh, as well that goes uh, beyond merely accommodating the diversities into the national mainstream, but here uh, it also entails uh, a special uh, effort in making them uh, participate in that uh, national mainstream, not only making them be part of the mainstream, but making them participate in the national mainstream. So that is uh, one uh, important element that we have to keep in mind when we are dealing with uh, people with disability. So the uh, point here is that uh, each member of the society needs to be respected regardless of their identity and status in the society. We as social workers have a very uh, fundamental principle of uh, dealing people with worth and dignity. We have firm faith in worth and dignity of every individual. So the premise of the social inclusion lies in the worth and dignity of an individual. And uh, social inclusion is not merely an act, it is a process. When I say it is a process, that means it involves various steps and it involves uh, concerted efforts uh, time and again to ensure that uh, society stays inclusive because we cannot ensure that once people are being included in the national mainstream, they can never be excluded from that mainstream. And that is what precisely is what is happening uh, time and again. So social inclusion is the process of improving the terms on which individuals and groups take part in the society. So the element terms here is very, very important. Uh, how they are participating in the different acts or different actions or different programs and different endeavors of the society, that is what makes it uh, different and that is what we need to think and ponder on. For social inclusion, uh, we have to acknowledge that people with disability uh, need certain improvements in their ability, their opportunities, and reason being that they have been disadvantaged at the identity level, they have disadvantaged uh, at their performance level, they have disadvantaged at their opportunity level. So all these uh, parameters need to be kept in mind. Uh, then further, uh, disability inclusion also uh, entails the element of relationship between people uh, in terms of how do they function, how do they participate in the society, and how uh, they ensure that uh, their participation is with the kind of opportunities that are available to other people in the society, they also get the similar kind of opportunities in every aspect of life. And uh, they can also showcase their abilities to best of their potential and desires. So with this uh, perspective, I would like to throw some light on what are the existing government uh, policies and programs that are there for the differently able people 
and then we can always indulge into a discussion in terms of understanding their viability in terms of implementation and what could be the bottlenecks and how to deal with those bottlenecks uh, to create a more just uh, society. So we have uh, one of the very important act, the Rights of Persons with Disability Act of 2016, which was uh, earlier known as uh, the Person with Disabilities uh, Act uh, that was in 1995. So this Persons with Disability Act of 1995 had an element of equal opportunity protection of rights and full participation. So uh, there were several amendments into it. And now the new version of the act is the Rights of the Person with Disability Act of 2016. And this particular act introduces uh, inclusiveness in the country uh, by safeguarding the rights of people with disabilities, uh, which is uh, important in terms of giving them special provisions for the uh, empowerment of people with disabilities, or new term has been given to them as divyangjans, uh, which is again a very debatable uh, term, and we can discuss on these terms later on, subsequently. Uh, Prasita, can you please change the slide? Next. Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. Now, uh, this particular act, uh, really talks about 21 different kinds of disabilities. So it has, uh, in a way, large, uh, broadened its uh, scope and wider its scope. Uh, the kind of disabilities that it talks about includes both physical and mental disability, and uh, which includes locomotor disability, visual impairment, hearing impairment, speech and language disability, intellectual disability, multiple disabilities, then cerebral palsy and dwarfism and several other these kinds of disabilities have been uh, included in this act and uh, it has been uh, throwing light on these disabilities with a perspective of uh, in, uh, increasing its scope and this uh, particular Ma'am, does it include mental illness? Yes, it does. Thank you. Yeah. So this particular act uh, includes uh, several kinds of both physical and mental disabilities and uh, with a view of safeguarding the rights of uh, persons with disabilities and enacting uh, special provisions for, the, uh, for their empowerment, giving them special uh, support so that uh, they can be uh, easily uh, you know given a path to be uh, in the in the main national mainstream or with the other members of the society next slide please so i will highlight uh, the major provisions of the act i've clubbed them into different sections so first section is rights and entitlements so this act provides for equality and non-discrimination. Uh, when we say equality and non-discrimination, that means non-discrimination on the basis of caste, color, creed, or any kind of disability or gender. So disability is uh, being given a special uh, concern here in terms of discrimination. Then right to a community life. Uh, if people are facing any kind of disability, that doesn't mean that they would be segregated from the society or their social life would be cut uh, It is very much a right uh, of every individual to have a community life because uh, we as human beings are social creatures and social animals, so we cannot live in isolation. So this right is very, very important. And then uh, protection from any kind of cruelty. Uh, cruelty is not that only the outsiders would be cruel to them at times, their uh, own uh, close members are being cruel to them because of their uh, disability, because they consider that uh, they are a burden on the family or on the society, or uh, since they cannot uh, uh, respond in the same manner, so people try to be cruel to them, 
so any kind of inhuman treatment is not acceptable so this gives them a uh, right to uh, not to be treated in uh, or inhumanly or not to be abused uh, they cannot be subject to any kind of exploitation or uh, violence for that matter so if any such thing is there that can be reported and they have every right to uh, seek justice on those elements uh, along with it uh, accessibility in voting right since they all are citizens of the country so their voting right cannot be curtailed because of their disability that they have uh, then access to justice then provision of guardianship so they have uh, every right to be the parents or be the guardian of uh, children that they have uh, so their disability should not come under way they might have certain challenges uh, in doing certain tasks but that cannot devoid them of their rights then uh, besides that they do have reproductive rights also uh, so these are the entitlements that they have when uh, when it comes to education and skill development this act also commits educational institutions to certain obligations and uh, provide specific measures to promote and facilitate inclusive education so uh, when we say inclusive education people with any kind of physical disability can study in the same educational institutions uh, it's just that the institution has to be uh, disability friendly uh, so it is uh, important so that uh, they do not feel segregated they do not feel uh, left out or alone that they have uh, separate schools but for certain disability we do require special educators and special uh, paraphernalia in the schools and uh, those are for for example people with uh, certain kind of mental disabilities uh, they need special schools and special guidance but other forms of uh, disability can be accommodated into the normal curriculum now even the good institutions have uh, same educational facilities of uh, you know for the people with blindness so brain facilities are there in the normal educational institutions so people uh, who have a disability of blindness they are studying with the normal people it's just that they are using the Uh, brill for their uh, educational purposes so this particular uh, right prevents them uh, against any kind of discrimination in terms of access to education or for that matter skill development next slide please then they have uh, there's a provision for reservation of persons with disability in higher educational institutions as well as employment now uh, when it comes to employment we see that these kind of reservations are being there or guaranteed only in the government organizations but when it comes to the private sector we still really have to struggle and go a long way in uh, ensuring and confirming or uh, motivating these employers to uh, you know take charge of uh, giving these uh, people with disability an opportunity to work in with their organizations because disability might be only a challenge but their potential we cannot judge on the basis of their disability their uh, intellectual acumen their uh, uh, ability to perform in a particular task uh, so those two are different things so other sectors the private sector also needs to be guided and uh, sen- uh, sensitized on these issues of giving them uh, enough opportunity for employment then uh, comes social security social security is uh, again as i said that the private uh, sector also needs to employ these divyangjans uh, it they should also be uh, provision for healthcare facilities uh, insurance special insurance schemes uh, for divyangjans apart from encouraging them participating in the sports or the recreational and cultural activities 
we see now that uh, even in the sports these uh, people a uh, person with disabilities are encouraged to participate and they have uh, special uh, you know um, sports uh, organized for them special events organized for them and uh, very recently we had one of the um, girl who has cleared her upsc a blind girl for the first time has cleared upsc exam so that shows that people have potential and then they, they can contribute phenomenally and do wonders only if they are given an opportunity to do so uh, next slide please now uh, another uh, besides this act we have a department of empowerment of persons with disability under the ministry of social justice so uh, this particular uh, department uh, has a mandate which includes uh, various aspects of disability empowerment including education social security employment rehabilitation accessibility and uh, they have a mandate to enhance opportunities for people with disabilities to participate actively in Uh, societal economic and cultural spheres uh, thereby ensuring that their full integration and contribution to the national development the moment these people uh, get an opportunity to be themselves and uh, take the advantage of the facilities and uh, opportunities uh, i'm sure they can contribute phenomenally and the moment they have this feeling that we are also being uh the equally contributor to the national growth uh, that further motivates them uh, you know in in uh, again motivating uh, their other fellow beings so even if we are able to uh, motivate few out of these opportunities the ripple effect is going to be there and the things are going to be uh, much more faster and better so there are several key initiatives which have been taken up by this department of empowerment of persons with disability which includes uh, accessible india campaign that means uh, creating uh, barrier free environments and promote accessibility in public infrastructure and transportation systems uh, so uh, accessibility is uh, very very important along with affordability so uh, this particular uh, department is uh, really uh, doing its bit in terms of uh, creating such an environment wherein they are uh, making efforts to create an environment that is conducive for them besides this uh, they also uh, provide them with the uh, legal uh, support uh, so that uh, their rights and entitlements can be ensured so by advocating these in inclusive policies and facilitating capacity building programs for divyangjans and collaborating with various stakeholders at different levels this particular department of empowerment of person with disability plays a very crucial role in fostering a more equitable and inclusive society where persons with disability can realize their full potential and can certainly lead a dignified uh, life but uh, at the implementation stages there are still several gaps and impediments uh, that need to be overcome next slide please then we have a national policy for person with disability 2006 uh, this particular policy recognizes the persons with disability as valuable human resource uh, for the country which seeks to create an environment and that provides them with equal opportunity and protect their uh, rights uh, enabling them for full participation in the society and uh, this existing policy since then has uh, has undergone on several uh, changes and developments have taken place in disability sector where uh, uh, including the signing of the united nations convention on right of persons with disability that is uncrpd uh, which was in october 2007 
And further to that, then we had this uh, enactment of the Rights of Persons with Disability Act 2016. And uh, in line with uh, convention and adoption uh, of this national education policy, the national education policy 2020 also uh, promotes inclusive education. So uh, education policy has also uh, paid attention to the element of inclusivity of persons with disability. Next slide, please. Other existing schemes besides this act and the uh, other national policy, there is an assistance to disabled persons for purchase or fitting of aids and appliances. We call it ADIT scheme. So it gives a, a monetary support and in terms of uh, accessibility, affordability, and uh, usability also. So uh, from where they can purchase uh, at an affordable price and uh, how uh, they can be uh, used for their, uh, for easing out their day-to-day -day lives. Then there is Deen Deal Disabled Rehabilitation Scheme uh, to promote voluntary action for persons with disability, DTRS scheme. Uh, which again uh, invites uh, different voluntary organizations to partner with them in the process of rehabilitation. Then we have national awards and national scholarships for persons with disabilities, uh, wherein we uh, encourage the persons with disability uh, to come forward and take advantage of the opportunity to participate in several uh, kinds of um, entrance test and take admission into uh, professional courses and uh, giving them awards on their achievements acknowledging them acknowledging their efforts in every field and scholarships again help them in uh, taking their education further so higher education uh, is getting very expensive day by day we see that there are limited opportunities in the government universities for people so uh, these kind of scholarships help them in uh, going beyond the government universities or uh, into the private universities as well. So there are several ways that we all can contribute towards inclusive policies as by creating an accessible environment, by uh, implementing inclusive uh, policies, creating communication standards. Uh, this is very, very important as a point in terms of creating communication standards here means. Uh, communicating, uh, uh, letting these communication channels open with the people with disability to understand what are their concerns, to understand what are their needs. Uh, because unless and until we are able to understand and comprehend uh, their requirements, we would not be able to deliver. So this communication becomes very, very important. And uh, then promote disability awareness, not only amongst the people with disability or families of people with disability, but amongst the society as whole, so that we are sensitive to these issues. And uh, then we have to set uh, inclusive recruitment standards also that uh, paves the way for uh, incorporating or giving these people with disability uh, an equal opportunity to be part of the uh, uh, contributing to the national GDP and uh, uh, being in the economic mainstream. Uh, professional support is uh, important uh, with the view that uh, for any kind of a guidance, uh, a particular uh, support is required. For example, if uh, any person with disability wishes to go into a particular uh, stream where they need guidance and support. So that kind of professional support should be made available to them uh, rather than uh, struggling from here to there because uh, uh, the diverse kind of disabilities have diverse kinds of needs and they have diverse kinds of challenges. So uh, each disability has to be viewed uh, significantly important and their challenges also need to be dealt uh, uh, differently and then uh, 
encouraging a culture of feedback in terms of whether whatever policies and programs that are in place are they of any utility uh, to, the, uh, to the person with disability or they still need to be given some more uh, you know um, of better programs or there can be uh, changes that are required so constant feedback is equally important uh, at every stage of the policy right from the formation till the implementation so feedback uh, if feedback is not there the loop doesn't get completed and we cannot really improve on to our existing systems so uh, these are certain basic things that i had to uh, discuss or highlight and now it is open for discussion i think this was the last slide prasita yes ma'am yes yes ma yeah now it is uh, open for discussion uh, you have any questions and queries i'm open to it thank you dr rama for your most welcome in fact uh, uh, your presentation has covered what all i had envisaged Like uh -huh. from the definitions to the policies which are relevant and yeah. go forward. Uh, yeah, so but I would say that this concept of disability inclusion goes beyond mere compliance with legal requirements, okay. because uh, uh, we need to embody a commitment to creating a workplace that celebrates the unique abilities and the perspectives of these differently able individuals that you. all that because unfortunately the representation of the persons with disability in india is very scarce reasons could be many because we have small pool of candidates with the requisite credentials or the old demands uh, certain specific uh, uh, abilities uh, or uh, it could be there is a difficulty in mapping the talents uh, in the available vacancies so uh, we understand that the challenge could be uh, many for the uh, employers also but uh, these issues get compounded by severe lack of awareness of disability inclusion because yeah. i was uh, just reading a uh, newspaper under the age of uh, 35 we have a 65% of the population and uh, out of this uh, statistics uh, reveal although we do not have the latest census but the population totals reveal that 30 uh, there are 30 million people uh, in india who are, who are having some of the other kind of disability and out of those 30 million only 13 million are employable whereas only 3.4 million have been employed in uh, Uh, you know combining organized and unorganized so uh, that really uh, gives us the kind of uh, the gravity of the problem which is there so i'm open to uh, further discussions if you have any questions or any uh, queries our regional director dr j s shruti madam is here she would just like to for your presentation thank you thank you giving us this opportunity to listen to you and we take this opportunity to also share that uh, as part of our induction meeting which is the first meeting of the learner uh, mm -hmm. we entry into the learner support center we highlight about the life skills needed for a different absolutely for the academy and uh, uh, as an institution we are also glad that uh, we are inclusive uh, and uh, we we learn from uh, each other and we have a uh, inclusive society as a employee also at employee level and also at student level yes. and uh, as part of this innovation club activity we also share about the availability of many courses of the new in the swayam portal That is mm -hmm. the reason to reach out to the differently able and also the special need learners. So yes. maybe yes, I may be interested in mixing different courses and studying, and which the degree system or a certificate system will not allow. And I prefer to study a year course, course meaning absolutely, 
have a program which comprises uh, um, multiple courses. Mm -hmm. So, in such a case, if we, uh, our interest is to do one course at a time, then so I am certain it's the best uh, to reach out to our needs. So, that, that is also one aspect. And uh, the National Scholarship Portal also facilitates mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, the availability of various scholarship under one roof for easy access. Mm. For which we, uh, the information of which we also disseminate to our learners, and the meeting proceedings are also available in the YouTube channel. And mm -hmm. Dr. Rama's presentation today will also go a long way in capacity building. So we will be visiting your presentation whenever we want to self-learn, develop ourselves of uh, uh, certain aspects related to the special needs at the uh, at field level when we are in the uh, working at the regional center of a mega open university, I should say. And uh, uh, we are also very grateful for Madam sparing the time. Thank you so much. It was indeed a privilege to be part of your, uh, you know, activity. And thank you so much for giving this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prasita. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Friends, if we have any, see, always we couple the innovation club activity where you have a message to take home along with your queries to be addressed. So if you have any queries which you want to address from Igloo side, please feel free so that we are available for discussion. Till you decide to ask what you have, we also take uh, this innovation club activity to talk about the national education policy. You would have heard about the national education policy even from Dr. Rama's lecture, uh, which highlighted that it is for everyone. And it is going to, it is already go, uh, going to be four years old because after it is being implemented in the year 2020. And if you want to start know about, as a student, as an academician, or as a uh, citizen of India of what NEP 2020 is, please visit Swayam portal. It's free of cost. You can get access to the course and be benefited of what are the uh, various components of NEP 2020 and how it is going to be implemented. And uh, uh, as a soft skill measure, when we are going for an interview, always have your file. And we all, it is, yes, you may be storing it in a soft copy in your email, but hard copy matters a lot. And carry more than one copy at the, uh, when you're going to a place, because we do not know, at least uh, two of people will be showing their hand when, when they are asking for your bio data. And your bio data should also have two references whom you know who can vouch for your character and also for the work which you have, which you have earned as the educational qualification and also your performance in the workplace. So with this small soft skill uh, uh, sharing, uh, we want to end this session if there is no query with a small uh, motivation message of how to move ahead in life. When we are moving, always there will be hurdles. If you are stuck in one place, it's not going to be an issue. But when you are moving, yes, you have to stop to fill your fuel. You have to stop to eat. You have to stop to do so many things in the process of reaching the destination. So in your learning process, the destination is your certification. And in between, you have to fulfill your assignment response you have to study for the examination. You have to write the examination and it, uh, the, all the activities has to be, uh, what to say, on the basis of your score bone uh, earnings. And you have to earn uh, the, the degree which uh, you are aiming to achieve after successful completion of the program of study. So in this process, when you go, do not give up and be honest to yourself and uh, of uh, uh, sacrificing certain leisure time activities to concentrate on study and have the determination to move ahead. 
and when we are moving in a highway or uh, or any place or in a life journey itself we always highlight about our own difficulties which is not always going to be a bad thing to be highlighted so there was a, uh, um, a man who had two pots one had hole the other didn't had so one day the, the pot which had a hole was talking to the man he said see i am uh, not of much use to you uh, you uh, carry water half way i am empty the man said no you turn back and see wherever you have traveled i have planted plants and the summer fruit trees and summer uh, small uh, flower plants so the water which has fallen from you has enriched so many plants and it has made the pathway beautiful also so uh, each one's difficulty or hurdles to cross is going to add on to the value of you as a person once you accomplish the task so do not give up in life take one day at a time and we appreciate each one of you for being with us and we specially thank dr ramas madam for being the resource person for this uh, innovation club enrichment session and uh, we look forward for more activities like this in the days to come and uh, for earlier sessions or if you want to visit the session again please visit uh, in the igloo regional center coaching youtube channel and be benefited of all the recordings and uh, we look forward to you till then bye from igloo